Good afternoon and uh, welcome to this uh, Emerge Africa uh, session today with uh, Maxwell Omwenga. We will speak about a bit today about how researchers and uh, stakeholders can um, collaborate on gathering of uh, agricultural indigenous knowledges uh, for sharing and use in communities. And for that reason, we invited uh, Maxwell um, Omwenga to to present for us today. Maxwell is currently a PhD candidate at the University of Tennessee at the Chattanooga in the United States, but originally from Uganda, um, Makarere University. And um, let's, let me not speak too much here and rather Maxwell. Thank you very much, uh, Jacob. Um, good afternoon, all. Uh, this side of this part of the world is in the morning. This is eight in the morning. Thank you very much for coming uh, to this discussion. I'll be sharing my experience, and from what Jacob has uh, already said, um, I appreciate for your in, uh, wonderful introduction. Actually, I'm originally from Kenya but they lived and work in uh, Kampala and uh, that is Uganda and in Makere Nevada. University and I'm now currently in the United States doing my PhD in computer science. Uh, briefly I'll be sharing my experience in um, how I was involved in this project actually too uh, which is looking, uh, which is in general looking at the agricultural indigenous knowledge in Uganda and uh, in three districts. So I'll be sharing my story. Uh, it may be not so much technical and not so much agricultural, but just my own experience. Um, this is actually. Um, methodology where in general we're we looking at improved uh, agricultural teaching and uh, learning empowered farming uh, stakeholders and uh, there is an interconnect with the outputs and the inputs and therefore we have like three uh, facets or three uh, components that we look at having a technology transfer skills and knowledge then we have the, the OERs and also the relevant uh, curriculum. And this go back and forth with the agricultural society and stakeholders and the farmers, agriculture students, universities. So it's a big community out there that is contributing towards this uh, big agenda of uh, agriculture and improving uh, agriculture in general in Africa. Uh, this project was undertaken uh, between College of Computing and, uh, and Information Sciences and College of Agriculture and Environmental Sciences. These two colleges came together um, to make sure that this project comes to a reality. Computing brought their computing expertise and the agricultural expertise were also put in perspective in this project. It is basically um, estimated that in 2050 the population of the whole world will have uh, increased by 9 billion people and the big percentage of this will be coming from um, developing countries or Africa and therefore all these people need food, they need to eat and uh, we see that the domestic agricultural dependency in, in most uh, of the developed countries is 70% even more. And actually 70% still indulge in the, in the small scale farming. And they're using the indigenous knowledge, they're using their indigenous tools, they're using everything that they have learned 
from generations to generations and how they do agriculture. However, they, we can't talk about, we can't uh, overshadow the fact that approximately 750 million people in developing countries still live below a dollar per day. And that is really, really uh, saddening because apart from the growing population and poor or low farming practices and an alarming poverty, then food security and indigenous knowledge is something to look into in how we shall provide food for the future and how we shall use the technologies and the indigenous knowledge that we have used in many years past to survive. Even in the 21st century, we still have communities that are embracing uh, indigenous knowledge in soil fertility using local manure from cattle, from horse, from uh, pigs or goat. Um, you're looking at pest control using ash, using um, a mixture of, of animal urine and, uh, and, and red pepper to control pests. Um, soil preservation, you know, planting materials, you still use indigenous knowledge, harvesting and storage of root crops, you're looking at cassava, um, sweet potato, ground nut, all that. And animal husbandry, still, these some of these practices are still being implemented in parts of Uganda. This research was taken. In, uh, was undertaken in three districts, that is Masaka district, Soroti district, and Hoima district. And uh, we looked mainly in, um, in uh, three food crops, that is uh, three or four, that is maize, cassava, banana, and uh, some instances we went to beans and all that and this kind of foods are found in these regions that we have talked about, even sorghum. You can see the lady there on the right is grinding millet seeds and the sorghum seeds to prepare food for his children, for her children. Therefore, the need to get this information uh, documented and recorded and shared brought this project to life and therefore we had to look for smart technologies that are current in how we can use um, smartphones to, to, to record audio, video, pictures and, use, and we use that to document uh, the indigenous knowledge and share it out there and this information can be accessed freely, can be reused, can be modified and can be improved. And we used also a couple of other uh, softwares to be able to produce this material. Like Photoshop, uh, Illustrator, uh, Premiere, Dreamweaver. And we found another useful tool for video editing, which was very powerful, called VideoPad. So that was one of the very good tools that we used. I think it's free online for 30 days, but after 30 days you can pay for it. But it was something worth using. So we used Samsung Galaxy S3. It looks simple, but it's a very powerful tool, and that's what we use to generate our audio, video, and pictures for this OER uh, AgShare project. Therefore, we undertook a uh, recording um, video recording sessions with the students and staff as you can see there we are using our smartphones to be able to capture videos with clarity and uh, precision uh, then we also had a workshop about uh, data collection techniques and technology application uh, from the media perspective we got trainings from the academia perspective we got training from stakeholders themselves they also give us training on how they perceive the project and how they want to get involved 
And uh, this is, was the first uh, workshop we had uh, in Uganda, in, in, in Mukono uh, town. And this, this wonderful picture was taken by Andrew Moore, who is in the, in the room. And uh, we also had uh, uh, guests from the US, from Michigan State. And we also had stakeholders from different companies and uh, NGOs in Uganda, and government agencies and universities represented in this workshop. This was a groundbreaking workshop for this project, and uh, many milestones were set up at this meeting. Wow, now let's look at the different indigenous ways of, you know, preserving food. Right, right on top, we're seeing how cassava is being dried up uh, with sun. And this food, I'm told, it can be dried and stored for up to six or seven months without getting spoiled. After being dried properly, it can work for that long. And that's what we need. We need not only to produce food, but be able to store it for the future. In the bottom right, we see, um, we see a traditional way of treating mums. That wooden club you're seeing they are holding on the, next to the, to the god. That club is put next to the fire, next to the burning firewood. And the, the, the wooden stick will, will warm up or will heat up. And when it has got enough warmth, that wooden rod will be rubbed on the on the on the mums or the throat on the swollen glands along the throat line, be able to treat or be able to burn those swollen glands. These are some of the traditional ways which are being used to treat mums in cattle, in goat, and any other animal that could be suffering from that. We are seeing again another way of preserving food here using um, eucalyptus leaves to preserve maize and beans. Again, this can work for up to one year or two years if you do the right measurement. And this food is stored in granaries. And these granaries are also made in, with, with traditional um, indigenous uh, means and materials using the elephant grass and other grass, special grass found in the, in the riverside and the clay uh, soil and these granaries are made in a very fantastic uh, technology, indigenous technology that can store food. And uh, it's quite interesting to see how this is done and implemented. Yes, when you talk about Uganda, you cannot uh, avoid talking about banana. We have uh, different kind of banana species. I think approximately three or four. And uh, therefore, this is a step of food in Uganda, and most people survive on matoke. There's a local name, matoke, which is the banana. And therefore, the indigenous way of killing weevils is by using ash. You sprinkle ash at the bottom of your plant or any part of the plant that is affected. And this ash will be able to dry up, be able to burn those weevils and, and uh, survive making, uh, not destroying your plant. And you can see the, 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 the banana plant is also being used on the bottom image where uh, a local chief has, uh, was, 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 had prepared uh, a hub that he was using to treat the the cattle which had an eye infection infection sorry and you can you see is use the banana leaf to make a final kind of uh, structure which he was using to put the eye drops into the into the cattle into the calf I think this is a small this is a calf yes so um this is some of the indigenous ways of um, agriculture where people are using different uh, mechanisms or different ways of of uh, 
of surviving or, or, or storing food or treating diseases. So all of this information was put together um, into um, an online um, OER data database, and um, and we called it Agshia Indigenous Knowledge Database. And you can see the URL there. You can go straight there. It is agshia-ik.mac.sd.ug. Uh, we were able to record about 60 records, those are videos, audios, and um, and photos. However, we were able to upload, we were able to clean them up, and we were able to have a successful upload of around uh, 35 or just below 40 uh, records. This was the beginning of this uh, project, and we 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 we're happy that we were able to get something. But I, I'm sure there's more work out there that needs to be done and be captured and recorded and shared so that food can be produced and sustained in Africa. And uh, we went ahead and uh, uploaded some of this information also on YouTube. For those people who have access to the internet can also get that. We put this information again in, um, in, in CDs and DVDs and we were able to disseminate it back to the farmers and to the local people on ground so that they can be able to view what they recorded, share the knowledge and appreciate how important this knowledge is to them. And also did uh, some posters and flyers that were pinned in different places in the, in the villages where farmers could also go and read in their local languages and learn and appreciate from each other. This is one of the workshops that we did, farmers' workshop in Hoima. The people in Hoima were very welcoming, the farmers, and they were able to give us an, a listening ear. That is Eric doing a presentation, he's one of the master students, and uh, I'm informed that he's, he's in the, he, he has a paper that is on the peer review, so he's one of the active students we have. We, have also, we had also one. Uh, PhD student uh, who I'm sure also is doing quite a good job in this field and other master students who are almost at the verge of finishing their masters. So this is the workshop, farmers workshop, training them on what we are capturing, what we need from them and appreciating them for the good work that they're doing out there in preserving this indigenous knowledge. Well, this is just a cross-section of the farmers that attended that day. And as you can see, the well energetic and good looking people. We appreciate their good work. Well, at the end of the day is um, to have this kind of a structure that I'm presenting here that somewhere somebody will be able to capture information that is on the left side of the image. And this information will be able to be uploaded somewhere on a data center. That is the database we are able to create. And therefore, after that, this data center can be accessed by different people from different places of the world, using different platforms, using different technologies, and share it out there. I'm sure most of the scientific um, Scientific uh, advances have been done using the indigenous knowledge, and indigenous knowledge has also improved from the scientific knowledge as well, or the current knowledge. So we need to create that that bridge that can be able to appreciate from both ends of the divide, where the indigenous knowledge people can share their story, and the scientists can share their story, and create a better uh, agricultural uh, um, environment that has food sustainability and security. Um, these are some of the achievements that we were able to come up with. Uh, we have the best student research experience report and that was produ produced by Eric, one of the master students. And also the student dissertations were also uh, um, developed and uh, produced. And uh, couple of paper and papers are being in a peer review and I'm sure others are also coming in future and this is one of the ways you can contribute into this 
yeah, this big topic of indig agriculture and indigenous knowledge not only in Africa but across the world. Then we also had the staff research uh, supervision experience report. So we had staff members who, ex who shared their experiences on how this project impacted their lives and their research experience. Uh, pharmacy dissemination, dissemination workshop where we went back to the farmers, trained them and retrained them and won their confidence in terms of what we need them to help us with and how important it is for us to share their story and share their experience with other people. All this information was put in flyers, CD-ROMs, or DVDs, brochures, posters, or your database. This is just a way of getting the word out there that this knowledge needs to be captured, needs to be preserved, needs to be shared, needs to be appreciated. A master's program was also designed and implemented at the Macquarie University. This is another way of contributing into the into the agricultural sector where we have students learning not only the current technologies but also learning how to appreciate the indigenous knowledge and merging up the two and improving and giving better solutions in agricultural field. Um, creating synergies with the local government and agricultural officers definitely this is was important. You have to create that uh, friendship and the synergies of, with local government because they have the machinery, they have the expertise and they have the, the connections that we need to be able to make it down to the ground, to the grassroots and they meet with the local people and, uh, and talk to them and them share, talking to us and sharing what they have. Well, there were a couple of challenges here and there there's nothing that comes that easy. Intermittent connectivity, internet connectivity, the actual database, especially at the grassroots. Our intention of using the smartphones was not only to capture the video and audio and pictures, but also to use it to quickly, as you record the information, you can be able to stream it live into the database. And therefore, after that, when the students go back to their uh, to their research lab, they'll be able to just go and connect back to the database, download the videos, work on them before they're finally published. So at some point in the field, there could be low or slow internet connectivity or intermittent connectivity to the internet. So most of the information was stored in the device or in the smartphone. So that also limited the storage of the, of the smartphone. Uh, battery life of smartphones, as you know, it runs down very fast if you're working on video all the time. Also, video recording challenges. Um, of course, you know, lighting, you talk about lighting, you talk about audio challenge, you're talking about surrounding, stage management, and all that. How to build up a storyline was really um, a big challenge. But uh, we learned from, from each other. Eric was one, was one of the leads in this where he worked with the students in one district and transferred his knowledge from one district to another. So it kept on getting better as we move from district to district. Um, then, um, so there was also a challenge where uh, some of the local terms that are used by the farmers, the indigenous local names they were using, were hard to align them with the botanical naming conventions. So we had a challenge in that, but uh, I'm sure with more recordings and uh, capturing of this knowledge, this ontology can be built up properly so that we can have a local flower or leaf named and can be quickly attached to, the, to its ontological uh, arm. Again, social politics was involved in a way where you have, you know, uh, the communities, some were not very welcoming because it, it was the first time and therefore we needed to have a lot of lobbying and talking to them and convincing them that we are there for their good and also convincing them that we are here to work with you and appreciate what you're doing and help you improve 
and make your indig indigenous knowledge work even much better uh, now and in future. And also work letting to working together with the local leadership was also something that we needed to work with. And we needed also to have a lot of clearance from the government, from other uh, uh, agencies, so that we can have this information recorded and published. Well, the, well how does the future look like? Future is always bright. I have three points for that. Everyone, if everyone shared their story, that will be awesome. That will be good. If we can continue to empower the farmers and the on the use of and benefit of agriculture and indigenous knowledge, that will also be awesome. Then continuous documentation of every piece of knowledge is vital. There is no knowledge that is obsolete. As you keep documenting it, as you keep sharing it, it grows and becomes more relevant and more people can relate to it and can be able to appreciate what's happening. Well, that's my story. And uh, in especial, I'd like to uh, acknowledge uh, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for the, the funding to this and uh, Saide for doing a fantastic job to make sure that this project comes to implementation and uh, fulfillment and the uh, forum for giving us a hand in all corners uh, of this project the michigan state university okay university and Akshia in thank you general. so much maxwell yeah, I, um, see that, I see oh, sorry, that uh, the alice has a few questions um, first of all i'd just like to ask alice if you like the, the, um, me just to enable the sound on your sites oer database using the agri dupra agri dupa platform and we also use some of the Ruforum um, uh, data sets that they are able to share with us freely. I can quickly summarize. Um, um, I see that uh, Alice is asking um, database properly. a bit about the, the nature of the collaboration required to, uh, to what you did. Maybe you can say a bit about Thank your, you very much, uh, your uh, stakeholder collaboration. I hope I didn't move very fast. I hand over back to Jacob. Thank you. Oh yeah, I can see them. I wasn't reading them because I was. Uh, okay, but let me look through that. Um, okay. Okay, um, Alice, thank you for the question. In, um, okay, from my side of view, the collaboration was, was good and, uh, you know, discussions or talking and lobbying is, is a continuous process. Uh, and, and therefore, the, the synergies between the different stakeholders was critical or is key still, where we need all stakeholders come in in terms of uh, uh, the end NGOs, the government agencies, the farmers themselves, the local uh, agricultural officers. Thank you, you Maxwell. Give um, us that blessing that reading Alice has talk some to another question about what you maybe also, you can tell us a bit about back what, what you we have gathered would have to done the community if you the project to build the confidence now. to build the network to build uh, that relationship. What are lessons? So uh, I think. Um, we we did we did a part in that, but I, I know we can still do more. There's more to be done. There's more talking that needs to continue, and all that, and the sharing of information and 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 and, uh, and appreciating each other. Uh, that's what I can say. I hope I answered you, Alice.
if I got you properly, if I got you right, you said, what could I do differently if I could do the project again? Oh, okay, good question there. Uh, if I was to do this again, well, um, this, this, what, this what comes to my mind is that uh, the social bit will come first, maybe, where you you link up with these farmers and and, and, and other stakeholders way in months before you even start recording and even talking uh, and even capturing this information. Um, seeing the environment that they live in, live with them, understand their language, and uh, get to know their culture and beliefs. I know research doesn't have all that time, but sometimes that brings out the best because you would like to appreciate from their perspective what they are using and why they use that. And from the indigenous knowledge point of view, this is knowledge that has been passed from generation to generation. So some of the people who had the knowledge had passed away. Some of the people who had the knowledge were old people, but they were not willing to share that easily to strangers. And uh, we need to find a way of talking to them and listening to them. And also seeing how they do it, be with them and live their life. You know, that's one of the ways of getting as much as you can from them and sharing it back to them in their own way they, they can understand their languages in their in, in the form that they they, they they have learned and they have known and showing them that this is still important and it can be used and um, well another from the technological part of point of view is uh, is how best can somebody share his story because that's how we need to share this information is it how easy can me or you uh, share your information. I can use an example like Facebook. Everyone shares their story. All, all social media platforms, everyone is sharing their story. And in a way, that has built the social media environment or platform because everyone has been empowered to share their story. So if there's any technology that can use there that can help farmers in their small way share the story probably in text, or share that in right. images. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Max. Um, I know share that, that, that before we started this session, you were speaking about uh, however simple, your however abstract computer it is, science and background and, and, and how and that you're saying it's not going to be uh, uh, capabilities. Uh, computer scientists can being technical put, like that. that uh, so a bit in line with that. Line. Just I see yeah, Alice yeah. asking another so question about a fresh um, look in both social. What the value is your opinion on the value and of the uh, of this kind of collaborative work uh, to engage in us as everyone computer science putting students everyone on board um, using technologies and how to empower maybe the farmers to keep using lead a bit further on that question say uh, going to ask the computer science students to engage in this kind of work to uh, share that your in their own way in their own in their own sentence in their own you know i think i'm putting my my message across clearly now thank you Thank you, Jacob, Jenk, Alice, and everyone else who has asked a question. Um, if I could go back a, bit, a little bit, the, the reason why we use a computer science students and agriculture students is that uh, we're trying to bring both expertise together to be able to help make this project a reality, where computer science students were bringing their computation skills in terms of um, building up the uh, the database, the helping in recording and troubleshooting during the field work. Also, 
computer scientists also brought into perspective the, um, the different machine learning capabilities that we can use, like image processing, um, um, talking about uh, artificial intelligence, which wasn't implemented per se in this project, but those are some of the inputs that computer science students can bring into this. And now we're talking about graphical processing units. We're no longer talking about CPU, but now GPU. With GPU, you can process gigabytes and terabytes of information just by a click of a button. With big data, computer scientists are not limited to anything. Right now, the indigenous knowledge is limited in terms of content, but in the next few years, I'm sure indigenous knowledge will be out there in big and in gigabytes and in different formats. And we need computer scientists to come in and put in into perspective big data analytics. Um, uh, and as you know, they're saying that big science is the sexiest, is the best uh, uh, job in, in, in IT now, where we can read this information, use machine learning capabilities to deduce and produce different facets of uh, of this information that can be used back into the communities to improve agriculture. Then agriculture students were bringing up the expertise in terms of how best they, we can record the information and how we can document um, this uh, the, the processes. You know, for that, Maxwell, yes, we, uh, Andrew, table, we can actually come you, from uh, you, you planting, might go ahead weeding, with your question. And harvesting, processing, grinding, and all that. And to a computer uh, scientist, that, yes. is, uh, uh, that is not uh, a the person that is used to. Observation. So the agriculture students are bringing their expertise in terms of uh, how helping set up the agriculture is done and, in, 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 uh, you, you, in real sense. Very briefly from and therefore, this helps the two students to work together model in terms of getting quality, kind of quality uh, what uh, Maxwell has told production some detail. and processing, and at the, the same time creating a storyline. That at the same uh, time, also work um, shouldn't be in isolation and only knowing for what to record. Faculty, as, 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 but uh, should as what, um, as, uh, there it is. As indigenous but should actually feed back to they're, they're able to say the the this is indigenous board. knowledge. This is not and indigenous way, knowledge. Or this could be uh, in the between. For the student and, and for the farmer and so for the faculty. Both both and so, students um, were able to put together. That was the little model that we were trying out. And skills, if I can say, Kosis. And CAIS, the Agricultural and the Computer Studies faculties, got together. And their project, they conceived themselves. No one told them how it should be yes. done or that the focus should be on um, uh, indigenous knowledge. And they said this is things that they were interested in. And they really went for it. So I was very impressed. Um, the, uh, they followed the model. Uh, but they gave it their own their own spin, and the results that came in were actually very valuable. Um, it showed one that the that the model worked, but also it the 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 products and the little pieces of indigenous knowledge which was put into the database and then disseminated using cell phones um, is valuable in its own right. Um, we also ran the project with other faculties at the university and at other universities as well. And the sad thing that we've discovered is that it was all fine and well when the project was running. And um, some of the faculties um, made the project, uh, made the model work. Others, it didn't work very well. Um, but as soon as it was all over and it all just reverted back to the traditional way of doing research, whereby the farmer uh, is cut out and we're back to just academic papers being um, produced for the faculty and uh, which is very sad because the model seemed to have proved itself but um, a number of factors mitigated it being adopted institutionally and the first one was it is slightly more expensive than the existing model um, because you have to equip the students with the technology you have to train them um, you have to keep going back out into the fields to engage with the farmer, not just collect data, but actually get the data back to him. Um, so that was one of the drawbacks. And then the other one was the, the universities are so entrenched in the way that they do 
uh, postgraduate studies that they weren't even interested in changing that model. They just churn it out. It's, it's like a conveyor belt. And that's how it's done in the past. And that's how it looks like it's going to be done in the future. So that was the sad part of what uh, Maxwell has described as quite a success story. So I want to first of all thank Maxwell for a great uh, presentation. And it was good to see it from your perspective, because obviously I see it slightly different. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, I appreciate it. And uh, I, I know we, well. we work together tooth and nail in this on, on all corners, from right from the, the, the stakeholders workshop to uh, the, the training in South Africa about the database and back and forth. Uh, you know, getting the right technology, getting the right smartphones and, 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 and laptops to use for this project. Uh, yeah, it was really a tough and uh, yeah, some of the challenges you mentioned are really critical. But, uh, you know, what you can do is just keep hope alive and keep doing what you can do best. Thank you very much, Andrew. Appreciate it. Thank you, uh, Andrew and Maxwell. Um, maybe I'd just like to, um, there's one question here from, um, from Miriam, um, as to whether the, um, the project you did uh, led to um, maybe a higher production and higher uh, farm uh, production, if you had any indications of, uh, of, of that perhaps. Uh, thank you, Maria, for that question. Um, it, from the project's initiation to when we finished, um, we were able to document a few improvements in terms of how these people use their technologies to improve their lives or even improve their production. And actually, per se, our, our model was not to actually make them improve their production per se, but it's able to tell them that you guys are doing a good job and you just want to record what you're doing and share it out and also bring it back to you and see how you can help. However, without, uh, without saying any other thing is that most of their agricultural indigenous knowledge practices was already doing a good job. Um, the way they were treating their animals, the way they are preserving their food, the way they were doing the agriculture farming was actually doing a good job for them. Probably there's some things that are being outdated, which needs to be, uh, which needs to be improved. But in general, their agricultural indigenous ways were, was working and it is working with support from the government and from other agencies. And even from research can also help them do that. So we were able to do one round of this, uh, of this, uh, this uh, research. I'm sure if we kept on doing it for the next 10 or 15 rounds, of or time, I'm sure there will be a higher production or a higher uh, in, uh, agricultural life improvement, not only in production, but just generally having good life. All right, thank you, uh, thank you, Maxwell. We still have about uh, 10 minutes left of the session, so I'm wondering uh, if there are uh, any more questions and comments. I see that the frame has um, has just joined us now. Perhaps the frame has some questions or comments about the about the projects, and the frame uh, let let us know if you'd like to uh, to have the the microphone as well. Ephraim, you're welcome. And actually, also in the chat room, you can see Eric Ahumba. He was one of our successful uh, uh, graduate students, master's graduate student. He's in the U.S. currently. We are together in the U.S., though in another state. It is quite essential that he's here. Um, I don't know if you could also be given a mic. He could, give, he could share his experience as a student. He has, he has done a couple of, uh, uh, he has done, uh, he has written a paper, which is under peer review. He has done uh, uh, different presentations in South Africa and in Nigeria and uh, in the U.S. about Agsha and about his experience. So Erika Homba is, could give us the student point of view 
I know Andrew Moore has given us from the, 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 the administrative point of view as well. I was giving my view from the technology and, uh, you know, my, I had many hats in this. I was doing, I was cutting across all, all, all parts of the project at some point. Um, but if I... Ephraim, um, I've upgraded you as a presenter, so you should be able to um, to get your sound uh, through to us. Otherwise, we have the usual uh, check of going to meetings and then take the audio set up. or perhaps resort to uh, the text chats. Well, while Ephraim is setting up, um, I'll just be saying something uh, that also came from the this uh, workshop, uh, the farmers' workshop that we kept doing with them, was that uh, you know, each time we went back, they could tell us something like, "We appreciate for you to come back because we didn't know that you guys were serious about this." Now, this that's one of the challenges that we had. That the first time you go to the farmers, if you don't introduce yourself properly, and if you don't have their uh, the approval, in just a social approval that the, you are the people they are, you're working with and your agenda is clear. From a social point of view, they will not tell you as much as they would like to tell you about the indigenous knowledge. So they, they held back part of the knowledge because it was our first time. They, they didn't know exactly what we were going to do with this information. So going back to them with the flyers and the videos and the DVDs and the posters and doing more workshops with them and uh, linking them up with the, the government local agriculture uh, um, officers then they build confidence and say yeah please come back we'll give you more in fact we gave you just half of it or part of it we have much more to tell you you have much more to show with you and also some of the indigenous knowledge was also kind of used in um, you know as you call it black magic or witchcrafty so at some point our students were also scared to record such kind of knowledge. Yes, this is indigenous knowledge, but you know, yes, that fear in you that, wow, if it is a witchcraft or something, uh, how am I going to record this? Am I going to be caught into this? Um, so at some point again, the students were worried on what they're recording. So this is some of the social indigenous knowledge that was out there. They gave us a few of it, and some of it was also had some connotations on it, around it, so it was a way Thank you, Maxwell. Um, I'm not sure if you have read the question questions from Ephraim, but I can just uh, say it out loud here. Um, Ephraim is asking you, if, uh, do you think that farmers are continuing to use the information you gave them uh, during the course of the, of the projects? Sorry, Jacob, I didn't get that question clearly. Can you repeat it again, please? Thank you. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, Ephraim is asking if uh, if you think uh, that the farmers are continuing to use the information you gave them during the course of the of the projects. Thank you, Ephraim, for your question. Yes, I think and I believe they still use that information. Uh, again, I said, in fact. This information, they already had it. They're already practicing it. What we did is just pick it, 
put it together, piece it together and share the different videos from different regions and uh, uh, for example we, we did a survey from different uh, three different districts and we shared the videos across all those districts and therefore the knowledge that they were using they were able to appreciate how it works for them and I'm sure they are continuing to use it and in another district they could use the same knowledge but use probably they were using it to preserve maize and beans in another region they're using that to treat weevils and, 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 and plants while they're in the garden so they're able to transfer the knowledge from one point to another so they that's my thinking that they are still using that knowledge because they've been having it all these years what we did is to capture that record it nicely put it together in a storyline and share the stories from different districts and for them to appreciate that their knowledge is still important and I'm sure that they're using that uh, and actually that is it that is the main goal is to be able to do a research on this pick knowledge from district A share it with district B and see how they can appreciate from each other and keep using their local knowledge for We're slowly going a bit, uh, slowly going towards the uh, the end of the scheduled time. But as I see that the frame has another question, uh, perhaps Maxwell, you could also um, also answering or get the comment to that. The frame is asking if there's anything from the project that you think uh, needs uh, further support. And if there are any aspects from the project that uh, that need to be picked up on. Thank you, Frank, for that question. Um, yes, yes. Uh, the, um, I think the part that needs uh, support mainly is, uh, is is the student research. I'm sure students are always uh, ready to work with the farmers. And as I mentioned earlier, that some of the things if I would have done this differently, if it was run again, is give the student more time with the community because it is, it's just beyond just going there for one week and say I want to record you and what you're doing and some of the crops that are being or the plants that are being uh, are being planted by these farmers take three or four or six months so if they could live with them for maybe say a week or two then they go back and they, so they start with them from preparing the land they live with them for probably a week or two then they go back after a week, a month or so, and see when they're doing the weeding and the farming, so they can build up that storyline from right from planting to weeding to harvesting to processing and food on the table. That will be good. Uh, again, back to the community talking. You know, just need talking, talking, talking. I, that's what I saw. That they need to talk to people and they need to understand what's happening. Uh, technology, yes, we needed uh, also expertise when it comes to building up the database okay the database in this case I'm saying the especially the videos we needed uh, at some point like um, a voiceover uh, we needed uh, we needed um, uh, you know so, so from, from, from some technical point of view we needed also help on that where we can have high quality production in terms of uh, building up this so-called small videos or movies about this knowledge and again uh, probably funding for research where students can also publish their research the, the graduate students can publish their research in, uh, in uh, conferences and journals so that this, well, this work can go further and outside our Thank you very much, Maxwell. Um, we have reached the end time uh, for this uh, session. I'm wondering before we end if uh, if there are any further questions um, or comments from from you, our participants, Alice, uh, Andrew, Ephraim, or Eric.
All right, it seems that we uh, get, the, get the message here that uh, there aren't uh, any questions at this point. And certainly, if there is, there, there is uh, a possibility to, um, to go into the uh, discussion forum that we have created. I'll just paste that link there. That's our landing page for this uh, session where we, among other things, will distribute the recording of this session. And there will also be access to a discussion forum where this conversation can continue uh, throughout the week. Um, and Maxwell, I hope we will be able to see you there as well. Yes, <laughs> I hope so. Uh, well, I just see that two shares. Yeah, I've shared a couple of uh, URLs there. Where that is the to the Axia uh, toolkit, and also the Axia website or the database, and also the YouTube channel where you can go and view the videos. This is work in progress, and I'm sure. That I'm All right. Sure uh, thank you. Thank you, Max. We'll definitely um, also share that. Surface. Share those links on, on our video. site as well uh, under under resources. All right. Uh, from my side, uh, Maxwell, once again, thank you for for this very interesting uh, session, um, and thank you to our thank participants. Thank you. We appreciate it. Yeah. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to switch off the recording.